Good afternoon and welcome to Red Cloud's 2022 pre-PDAC mining showcase. My name is Alina Islam and I'm a senior research associate here at Red Cloud Securities. Next, we are pleased to host Pasifino Gold and have with us Lincoln Greenidge, CFO of the company. Lincoln, you will have 15 minutes for your presentation followed by a five minute Q&A session. Attendees, please feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A link and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. With that, Lincoln, I'll pass it over to you to start the presentation. Thank you, Alina, and welcome everyone to um, uh, this event. Um, uh, Spasofino Gold, we have uh, uh, the Dugby Gold Project in Liberia, and uh, I'm going to just walk you through, um, give you an update as to where we are. So go through this quickly with all right, table of contents. Okay, so the key highlights, um, there are three main key highlights. Uh, number one, it's an advanced project. Uh, we're close to completing a DFS um, and the feasibility study should be done by mid-April. Uh, we have DRA, uh, global leader in the global um, gold project design, and they were the first to uh, uh, build a gold mine in Liberia. So um, we're in good hands uh, with experienced uh, uh, folks um, assisting. Um, we also have a mineral development uh, agreement, um, which was uh, issued in 2019. And that uh, stands us in good stead uh, to uh, move uh, the project along. Um, secondly, the, the asset uh, is, is a large expanse. Uh, so much so that uh, the Dubi and uh, Tucson pro, um, deposits uh, only make up about 5% of the 2,600 square kilometers um, that, uh, we, that we have in play. Um, at 3.3 million ounces uh, in measured and indicated um, with uh, uh, 1.37 uh, grams per ton of gold uh, includes a 2.88 million ounce at 1.58, which is not too bad. Um, and the deposits are still open for expansion, as I said. So that's, uh, then uh, thirdly, it's location. Um, you know, anytime you want to have a mine, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a bonus, it's a plus when, especially in Africa, to have it close to the coastline. And with Liberia, we have it um, uh, significantly close to the coastline. Um, with um, it only takes sem it's about seventy kilometers away uh, from the Greenville uh, port and takes uh, um, only an hour or so. Um, certainly, when we are in production, and it takes about two to three hours now um, to get there. Uh, the access corridor we upgraded that in two thousand and twenty one. Uh, the executive team, I'm not going to go through uh, other than to say that the executive team, as well as the management team, uh, we're well experienced. Uh, every one of us uh, with um, and the guys on the ground um, have experience, uh, not just in mining, but in mining in Africa and not just in Africa, but in Western Africa. So uh, we're in good hands there as well. Uh, from a snapshot, uh, the Dugby project, it's, uh, as I said, the 3.3 million ounces measured and indicated. Um, we're well on the way to get an mineral reserve estimate uh, done. Um, uh, Mid-April, we should have uh, the DFS uh, completed. Um, uh, There's a low strip ratio. Uh, it's it's four, the, the PEA had 4.5 to 1, um, but we're closer to um, 4 now. So that's a good improvement. Um, it's two open pits, uh, very close apart, uh, 4 kilometers. Uh, and uh, certainly um, close to surface. So that's, again, it, it makes it much uh, cost-effective and easier uh, and, you know, to, um, uh, to, to see these two pits um, probably get into um, one at some point. Um, life of mine is 14 years. Um, this, uh, we expect 5 million tons per annum mined. Um, steady state uh, is about... Uh, between 188 to 200,000 um, ounces per year. Uh, as I said, it's 70 kilometers from the Greenfield port. Uh, so when, when we are in construction and we look into get uh, equipment uh, um, to uh, 
um, uh, to the to the to the location. Um, seventy kilometers. Uh, certainly, um, if anyone has worked in Africa, you know that seventy kilometers is steel. Um, when you could be 700, 800 kilometers away. And uh, with uh, liquid natural gas, uh, we'll talk about that in a while. Uh, first movers in an undeveloped, uh, underexplored area. Uh, the Birmingham uh, geology region of West Africa is well known uh, and has been um, explored quite extensively uh, in the neighboring, neighboring uh, countries, uh, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Mali, and so forth. Um, but you'll notice that uh, Southwest, uh, which is where Liberia is, it's underexplored. Uh, so we believe that we are, um, you know, it's ripe um, for us and um, uh, to uh, uh, now explore and uh, to reap the benefits of doing so. Uh, in June 2021, we um, completed a preliminary economic assessment. Uh, and that PEA, um, the metrics uh, were uh, using a 1600 uh, gold price. Um, the NPV was $825 million uh, US uh, with a 34% IRR and approximately 2.9 years uh, capital payback uh, with um, all in sustaining capital of $893 uh, per ounce. And that was the PEA. Um, um, by mid-April, we will give an update, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing improvements on, on that. Um, we uh, seventy percent, well, at least the time when this was done, but we're closer to eighty percent now uh, complete. As I said, um, by mid next month, uh, we should be completed the uh, PEA. Sorry, the um, DFS. Uh, DFS progress, just to give you a bit of sense as to uh, the update from the PEA that was done in uh, last year. Uh, the pit slope, uh, you'll see that the, uh was 55 uh, degrees and now it's uh, closer in the range of 50 to um, 58. Um, so we're looking at um, certain improvements uh, in um, the angle. Uh, gold recovery. Um, the gold recovery actually is between 85 to 91 uh, percent. So just to give a bit of perspective. So, uh, but obviously we were still looking at um, uh, optimizing to ensure that um, you know we get the most optimal um, uh, recovery um, at the right um, uh, capex. Uh, power costs. Uh, I think that's uh, certainly one of the benefits that we've seen so far. Which, we, it was at 21 cents, and now we're seeing uh, 17 cents uh, per kilowatt hour um, consumption uh, over a 15 year period. So that's um, to me um, uh, very beneficial. And of course, greenhouse gases, who doesn't want to see a benefit there? We've seen that um, surely um, in a reduction of the CO2 emission by 38%. Um, then lastly, you know, I would say that um, you want to put money into the ground and uh, you want to maximize the money that actually gets out of the ground. And in order to do that, we uh, um, obviously we need to um, get in a lower dilution is much better. <laughs> and we've seen that uh, certainly from the PA to now uh, where we are with the DFS, that it's closer to um, 8 percent uh, range. Um, as I mentioned before, if you look at this um, graph, you'll see um, um, the distance between the Dugby and um, uh, Tucson, which is about four kilometers away. And uh, it's a long strike, um, very good uh, deposit. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, we have about four million, um, and you know, if I say two million ounces uh, uh, in the ground, and if you look at two million ounces in the ground um, at um, you know, at a current uh, gold price, um, you know, th this uh, project is uh, well worth um, looking into. Um, earning agreement, I should mention that part of the completing DFS, which is actually key for us, is that we will um, get earning 49% interest. And immediately after, we will um, have the put call option uh, with uh, Hummingbird, who are the current owners of the Dukeby project. And as a result of that, um, uh, Pasofino will own 100% of the Dugby project. And we're looking forward to actually moving, um, seeing that through so we can uh, move forward with uh, unleashing uh, more of the value. 
uh, ESG, um, we, uh, everybody understands um, the importance of environmental, social, and governance, and uh, we continue to work closely with um, with um, the community, the government, and all stakeholders, and uh, that's uh, working out very well. Uh, the good thing about uh, Liberia is that there's only 4.7 million uh, people, um, and um, displacement is very low. Uh, operating in Liberia, as I mentioned, um, very stable uh, compared to um, other Western um, country, African countries. Uh, 4.7 million people. Um, the first female head of state in all of Africa was Ellen Johnson, sir, and that was uh, between 2006 and 2018. Um, the, the government is pro mining and um, is looking forward to actually moving it forward because, uh, as I said, it's very unex it's an unexplored uh, area. Um, uh, Liberia has several uh, operating mines, uh, gold and iron ore, and uh, Becerra um, is uh, one of them. And um, um, one of the things that uh, you will note uh, is that, um, again, it's still un underexplored, which is the reason why uh, Pasofino has a good stake in um, being one of the main um, gold um, mine, mining companies, um, um, you know, when we actually go into production. Uh, the MDA, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, one of the, the risk in the mining license application um, that it, um, it was signed in 2019. It has 25 years, an option to extend. Uh, one of the key items I should mention is that the if a uh, gold price goes below 1500, uh, the government has agreed to uh, reduce uh, fuel duty by 50% and 75% uh, for the first five years. So that's a bonus for us. Um, the update mineral resource estimate um, I, I mentioned um, uh, previously um, using a 0.5 uh, grams per ton cutoff uh, grade, and you know some people have uh, you know 0.3 or, and so forth. So I think we're certainly in good stead um, to our grade uh, is can be uh, compared uh, quite nicely with any other in the area or any any other project. Um, so if I continue for a long exploration, uh, it's 2,600 uh, kilometers, uh, square kilometers, uh, area. And, and as you see this little hole here, it's only 5% of the area. So we're well, um, um, uh, we are well, um, ready to actually, uh, take advantage of the upside. Um, the near mine targets, um, uh, as you can see down slope, um, uh, and, and the two zone area, and then just below south of that uh, is the uh, Burkina Jeddah with a really great uh, uh, improvement in um, grade. But uh, that's not going to be part of the DFS, uh, so that's uh, again upside, and that's what in Burkina Jeddah I just mentioned. Um, our capital structure: uh, we have uh, 41 million shares outstanding. Um, our market capitalization is right now is about 33 uh, million dollars. And if you do the math, you'll realize that, as I said, with the 2 million ounces minimum in the ground, uh, at current uh, gold price, um, uh, having a market cap of 33 million is, um, is, is, is way undervalued. Um, so it's a great opportunity for someone looking at a gold mine in a stable area like um, Liberia. Uh, the options uh, are all out of the money. Um, uh, at least the, uh, the vested uh, options. And uh, we have uh, uh, sufficient cash to actually uh, see us through to complete the DFS. Um, with that, I, um, I will leave this uh, an open to questions. Um, thank you very much for taking the time and uh, any questions I'll be happy to answer. Thanks a lot, Lincoln. Um, that was a great presentation. So I think we have time for a couple. Um, so you mentioned this earlier through your presentation, Lincoln, but um, can you maybe elaborate on um, what exploration plans you have for some of those high priority target areas on the property? So right now, um, as you could imagine, that, uh, and maybe I shouldn't didn't mention that, so I should mention that uh, Hummingbird and as well as uh, Pasofino, we've spent oh, in excess of $80 million uh, 
um, thus far. So our focus right now is number one is to get a DFS uh, completed. Number two, um, as a result of getting a DFS completed, getting a 49% interest um, and then vending in the 51% interest. So we have 100% ownership of the Duke B project. Um, then when it comes to the expiration, um, as you mentioned, uh, the targets, I think one of the things that we'd like to look at uh, for sure is um, the Duke B, sorry, is the uh, book, um, uh, book and Jetta. Um, and the reason why is because it's really nice, it's down to, uh, south of the, the uh, current um, pits um, because of its grade. And the grades uh, uh, currently uh, uh, look very promising. So we want to have a look at that. But uh, first things first, we need to, uh, and that's why we, we've completed the um, expiration and we're not doing any expiration until we actually get the DFS uh, done. Okay, no, nope, that makes sense. Um, so next question, um, you know, you mentioned um, operating in Liberia. Um, yes. Can you maybe just touch on uh, whether you have sufficient access to technical staff and, uh, you know, resources required for both exploration and mining activities? Uh, absolutely. So, so we have um, uh, locally as well as um, we have uh, teams from uh, South Africa and the neighboring um, Ghana. And uh, our expectation uh, is uh, is that uh, we'll be um, well um, a resource in order to 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 uh, move uh, into construction um, for sure. And uh, certainly, when we're operating, uh, we see no problem at all in having um, the right um, level of um, staffing. Uh, locally, as well as uh, you know, the right staffing from uh, expats and um, and um, uh, teams uh, to ensure that uh, we can um, successfully um, um, successfully construct, as well as can successfully um, produce um, when the time comes. All right, great. Um, so looks like you have a lot coming up in the next few months. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> um, with that, Lincoln, I uh, just want to thank you for a great presentation, and I want to thank all the attendees on the line for joining us. Uh, just as a reminder, next up, we have Trillium Gold and Tier 1 Silver. Thank you. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.